Hi, uh, I'm Ollie Geddes. I'm a black belt under Roger Gracie, um, and today I'm here to show you uh, a footlock variation. Again, for many, many years, footlocks were done the same kind of way, um, and this is a way that's been popularised most, most, most recently by Mikey Musumeki, uh, other people, um, which I think is superior to the classical way of doing a straight ankle lock. So we're going to look a little bit at that now. I call it the outside hook footlock, but there's lots of different names for it. So we're going to start off in a traditional footlock position. If you just uh, lie down for a second. So we'll just start from here and in. So a light arm attack, normal ankle lock position. Again, I have a foot, I have a foot on the hip, I turn here, and I arch out. And that's fine, and that works That works really well. Um, the stronger you are, the better it works, but that applies to a lot of things in jiu-jitsu. Uh, also, the more you jump backwards and cause damage. But uh, what we're looking to do is to have continuous control over this, which is hard to do if I don't have this exact clamp, okay, and to maintain the position, and also to just add more pressure to the foot. You don't see that many straight ankle lock finishes, or you do see more now than you used to. So the position I think is better for this, generally, is um, for me to basically push his leg into him a little bit to raise the knee, and I'm going to take this outside foot, I'm going to hook it here, okay? So this creates a sort of position where my foot is on one side, my knee is on the other, and his knee is directly in the middle, okay? So from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift my second foot out and place it on the hip. So why is this better? A couple of reasons. Firstly, um, it creates a situation where there's a lot of rotation on his knee, forcing it to the outside. Okay? This may also accidentally tap him for knee rotation. That's not the purpose of it, but it does happen when you've been training for a while. But anyway, uh, it is still a straight ankle lock. It's still fine. Uh, so if I'm set up here, and it keeps his weight kind of set across it because there's a ton of force here, which stops him from easily planting his foot and standing up, which is always the big issue. From a regular ankle lock, he will turn his knee inwards, he'll press his up, and he'll come up. And I can't, if I can't reap, there's not a whole lot that I can do about that. Okay? Whereas again, if I have my outside hook here, again, his weight is kind of focused here. Again, if you have really bendy knees, maybe that's okay, but most people, this is not a fun position to be in. This is, is just weighted to the outside, and there's a lot of pressure um, on the inside of the knee and the outside as well, to be fair. The other reason why it's better than a regular ankle lock usually is because you are correspondingly further down the ankle. Because again, if I'm here, where are my hips? My hips are here, I'm tight, I'm high up here. If I move backwards, I'm now half a leg further down. So in, I correspondingly have half a leg more extension and he has half a leg less for me to pull off, basically. So um, basically, so if I'm set here, uh, I have this position, my foot here is gonna go directly on the hip. You can't put it here because someone will esteem a lock you and break your foot and you'll look really silly. Uh, so generally on the hip bone here is fine. And then I'm basically gonna push off this and I'm gonna lift and extend towards this side here. Okay, so, so again, I'm still in line with his shin and foot and knee. I don't want to be trying to go across it here. When I lift, it goes with me, and it stays directly in front of me here. And then once I have that, I push off my foot here, and I extend and arch backwards, and we can do a lot of damage from there. Yeah, it's got a lot to give from there. Again, that's not even that tight. Uh, if you want to, again, you can feed the collar in. You can add more power to it. You could, uh, some variations will put the hand on the knee here and push for added pressure. They all, they all work uh, in terms of you know, violence. Um, maximizes. Uh, so, again, so we're starting from the beginning position here. So, I basically, I'm going to push, if this, if this leg's straight, it's hard to get my leg under. So I'm just going to push forwards a little bit, I'm going to rotate around and hook underneath here. So I have my position, and when you, when you kick, you should see his, move, his leg kind of move with it. Then my other leg will come over, I will place it on the hip here, and I'm going to just fold my right elbow under me, and I'm going to lift myself up, basically pushing off my left leg here, so my weight's kind of set here. As I go, now it's set up. Again, you will feel if you're doing this right, he will have to lift his backside off the ground because there's a lot of pressure in here already. And then you will arch again, still over this shoulder. If you arch this way, you come back again. I'm rotating into it here. So you're on the side of your head and then you can just push away, uh, drive off the hip and extend and get all the damage in there. Also, uh, the other advantage of this is if I'm here and he does grab on my collar or something like that, I can go over his arm sometimes and just crush and extend yeah, because again, it just blocks off that clear path towards the leg, which again, uh, towards the collar. Whereas again, if I'm here, he reaches over the top. It's very hard to really make anything else happen. Yes, you can go like 50-50 or something else, but this is not a great position. It's very hard to break once it's there. If I'm here, again, I can either go inside it, or again, I can go over it. Both of those can generate enough power to break the grip, or just to finish while the grip is still there. Again, elbow tucks underneath, elevate up. My left ass cheek goes up in the air. We turn, we extend, bye -bye. and that gives it a finish. I, I first, that was first something I saw, it was called the Serbian footlock originally, uh, back on BJ Eastern Europe, I still can't remember why, but it was, uh, and it's been popularised a lot more um, since then, I think it's just inherently a superior um, version of the regular straight ankle lock.
both work and the mechanics, uh, once you get good at one, the other one will also go, but um, I think mechanically it's just a slightly superior position that gives you more options. Um, yeah, thank you very much uh, for listening. Uh, if you want to find anything else, you can find me on all the usual social medias uh, under Oliver Geddes, uh, Instagram, Facebook. Um, it's G-E-D-D-E-S, by the way. It's not a common name, so uh, try that out. Thank you very much, guys.